Feed the power on. Whoa! <laughs> So I got a little bit distracted and I've decided to build myself a sim rig. I've always wanted one. I had to go on an old sim rig with some Fanatec stuff a long time ago. And I said to myself, if I'm ever going to build a rig, I want to do it with Fanatec. So this is it. I've just uh, gone a little bit silly. So I bought a secondhand PC off of Facebook Marketplace. I got the V3 pedals. When I had to go on the sim rig, it had like a really strong brake pedal. I really liked that. So I wanted to go to the club sports and we've gone the eight Newton meter direct drive with the, what is it? P1 V2 wheel. So let's get all this out of the box and figure out how to mount it. Then winning race. That's satisfying. Satisfying, you like it? Fanatec know what's up. We got some stickers, let's it's go. Gonna, it's going on the sticker board. Oh, straight to the sticker board. What would you like on there? Uh, I reckon we go a big one. There we go, nice addition to the sticker board there. And I think that's the stock power pack, but yeah. we'll go to the big one in a sec. Shifter one, shifter two, pedals, a handbrake. So it's directly to the motor. Yeah, so it goes. That's just an electric motor. So it's what's called a direct drive. There's no gears or. So it can spin forever. I think so. Yeah. So I opted for the eight newton meter option, which came with this. So it's like a bigger power pack. So nothing too exciting. So we never drive them, but we actually have half-built race cars here in the shop. So I want to try to mimic the seating position that we've got here in the drift van for the sim rig, so it feels real similar. And to, for starters, I want to just get the measurement of the uh, angle of the seat. So I'm going to use this angle meter here, and I'm going to call that 10 degrees. So if we can mount the seat on a 10 degree angle, it's going to be similar to a uh, racing car. And this mounting point here to the accelerator, 550. Let's start there with the sim rig. We might move it to make it feel a little bit different with those pedals, but it's a good starting point. So 550 millimeters. And it's hard to kind of see, but where this seat's mounted in this car, the pedals are actually higher than the seat mount. So we'll try and do the same in the sim rig. So from the seat mount to the steering, to the center of the steering wheel is 530. It's gonna give us somewhere to start at least. So from the seat mount, we said, 550. From there to the center of the wheel, we said 530. Got the seat sitting on the ground with 10 and a half degrees. Just chocked up on some bricks and some leftover aluminium. About there, but higher. What do you reckon, 80? Yeah. Well, yeah, that definitely feels like it. It feels like a clutch? Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, right. I'm an engineer. Turn, yeah, there you go. This is gonna be interesting. Ah, how do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Big feet. Don't rip your pants. <laughs> yeah, but this is my seat, my fat boy seat. on a bit of an angle actually. Yeah, that feels heaps better. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh, that's heaps better. 23 degrees. So I'm using the front hole of the seat as my datum. Everything's measured from there. So everything is measured from this point here. So everything's measured from here. Front of the Fanatec cube. It's going to be 240 mil. And that's going to sit back on a five degree lean. The seat here leans back at 10 degrees. Obviously this is touching the ground. From the ground up, 
It's 540 to the, the that front corner of the Fanatec. And then my pedals here, we're gonna raise them up 50 mil and run them at a 23 degree angle, 510 millimeters from that datum. So everything gets measured from that ground point there and that front bolt of the, the seat. And that's all the info I need to uh, design a rig. I took a couple of photos of Aiden sitting in the uh, original setup and had a bit of a closer look. And we just decided that the steering wheel was actually too high and probably a bit too flat. So uh, Lewis gave me a hand the other night and we sort of dropped the steering wheel a little bit, put it on a bit more angle. Actually gonna put the seat on a bit more angle as well. So that's actually gonna be the finished setup now. Uh, so yeah, that was the important part of setting up this mock-up situation. Let Aiden have a sit, let Lewis have a sit. Who, Lewis is a bit taller than uh, me and Aidy. So just wanted to try to make a rig that's gonna be able to work with everybody the best that we can um so yeah that's kind of the importance of the mock-up thing i mean i could have drawn it all out but to actually sit in it is uh, a good way so i've got all my dimensions here on how i'm going to do this i use the front of the seat here as a datum and obviously the ground as a datum i've got all my heights and all my distances and then we're going to have about 50 millimeter of adjustment in it for for lewis being a touch taller so yeah we've got all our angles we've got all our measurements uh now all that's left to do is get started Gonna spend a bit of time setting up my pedals. So I don't know these look a bit too video gamey for me. And you get these um you get this style pedal with it. It looks a lot more like a, an actual pedal box, like a like a tilting style pedal box. Um so I'm gonna chuck them on because I just like the look of them better and I reckon they're gonna feel a bit nicer underfoot rather than a big flat steel pad. Um you can sort of roll your foot on these a little bit better. I'm going to swap them over and every review that I read, because I did do a bit of homework before I bought these, I didn't just go in cold, um, said that you pretty much have to get the upgrade kit. Now, what this is going to do is give me a much harder brake pedal. The very first proper sim that I drove had a really hard foot pedal and it's the one thing that I loved about it the most. A really hard pedal for me really makes it feel like you're driving a race car and I, I, and I like that. And in my sad, miserable A86 over there, the brake pedal is actually really quite hard as well. So I'm going to try and replicate that. Uh, with this kit here, red ones are like a medium, the green ones are a lot harder. So I'm going to get them in there. I'm just going to go straight to the hard hardest setting. So I want it to feel like a really hard racing pedal. I think a good idea with these as well, it's going to give me a lot of adjustability. Not only being able to pivot it, but also back and forth on the pedal. Without having to move the base, I can sort of move pedals around and get everything in exactly the right spot. So I think these are going to be... The, uh, the better pedal anyway. You know when you're watching YouTube and someone's like, don't forget to subscribe. And it's just like, have you ever been halfway through a video and you're like, do you know what? I'm gonna subscribe to this. And then you forget. And then when they say, don't forget, you go, ah, that's right. I was gonna hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, what, why we keep saying that? Why is that what's stuck? Don't forget to subscribe. Like, please subscribe, I understand that. Um, it will change your life if you subscribe, I understand that, but don't forget to subscribe. It's just like, don't forget to put the washing out, it's in the washing machine, don't forget to empty the dishwasher, don't forget to subscribe to this video that I'm currently watching, that if I was gonna like it, I would've hit subscribe anyway. Like, don't forget, I just, I'm stuck on the forget bit. This is really fiddly. These dome nuts do not make it easy. But yeah, I just, I just don't understand that. Like, please subscribe to my channel. And then the other one I love is, really help me out. Just like, well, make good videos. If the video is good, I'll, I'll like it. Or really help me out if you push like. It's just like, wow. okay, w will it? Is your life gonna change if I push like? And you know, is that one like gonna be the difference which i've dropped that washer where is it here it is that one like from me is that going to be enough to change your life really help me out you know if, if you don't push like then my life's going to be so difficult you know I just, I just find it interesting all these things that have become normal don't forget oh i forgot that really important thing that i was just about to do i forgot about all oh, these nuts are a pain in the ass but seriously hit subscribe <laughs> Really help me out. My life will be better. Mm. All right, I think we're gonna have to take off the rumble motor here. And you'd really help me out if you hit that like button. <laughs> All right, 
<laughs> now, with those nuts in there, these nuts, got him. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that one up. Oh, this rumble motor is really in the way for this. See, if you'd hit like earlier, you would have helped me out and I would have known that I had to take this off earlier. And because you didn't hit like, you didn't help me out. You know what I mean? And now I'm shadow banned. No one's gonna see these videos because you didn't push like. <laughs> is that the mentality? Is that what we're saying to everybody? That my life is gonna change. I'm gonna be a YouTuber and make millions of dollars. No one wants to hear about you making videos, Tim, and how hard it is. Just put together this wicked gaming rig and do it in a way that's super fast so that it looks like this hasn't been taking me hours and you can just do this sort of thing in an, in an afternoon and have a, a rig completely built and finished. That's how the game is played, isn't it? Don't forget! The old style, I don't know, it just doesn't look like something I'd drive in a car, whereas that looks like every race car I've ever looked at. So I like that, let's get the other ones on. And then the other one, well, oh, tell me what you think in the comments below. It's just like, yeah, we all know where the comments are, mate. I wasn't looking for them above the video. I know the comments are below. Oh, tell me what you think. They don't actually care what you think. They just want the video interaction because the way that it works is the more people that are interacting with a video, the more YouTube push it. So tell me what you think down in the comments below. Just means please feed the algorithm beast. Give the algorithm what it wants. Give me what I want, which is views and gratification that I'm a wanted and needed person because people watch my videos on the internet. Am I being a bit cynical today? Am I being a bit... <laughs> Right, let's see if we do this one different um, and put the button heads on the outside. And don't forget to tell your mum that you love her. With that that way, Nintendo 64 rumble pack a bit easier. Now who here? Write down in the comments below if you have OCD and it's really upset you that I've put these bolts in different on this one than I did the accelerator pedal. Leave your comment below. <laughs> Leave your comment to the side of the video. Um, I've actually got something that's similar to OCD, but it's called um, CDO because it's in alphabetical order the way that it should be. Don't forget, leave a comment diagonally to the other side of the video. Get the clutch on. This one will be a bit more straightforward. There's no rumble on the clutch. Actually, pretty cool little mechanism, the clutch. Dunk, dunk. Try to make it feel like it's got that bite. I thought that was quite clever. Like all good drifting, this clutch is going to get it kicked like it owes me money. So uh, I've got to make sure that's all nice and tight. But uh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. That looks like more like a pedal box, doesn't it? I actually really like that. All right, let's play around with the uh, the brakes. So the brakes come with a, a bit of adjustment on the standard setting. So you can sort of tune it a little bit. I watched a few videos of people showing you how to use this, but no one uses the tool. I'll actually give you a little bit of a tool here to help you get the pin out. So let's get the pin out using the tool, see if it's any good or not. Okay, so that comes out. T -t -t Today, Junior. <laughs> All right, and then in here, we've got these bits of rubber. How do we get them out? All right, so. Here's the bits of rubber that you push on, and we're gonna swap it for a much harder rubber. Much harder. So the design from Fanatec is you're supposed to still put a little squishy one in, but I've seen a few people cutting up the other ones to make the pedal even stiffer again. I want this thing to really feel like my A86 or a, a proper race car, so. Uh, I've seen guys do it with the green, I'm gonna do it for the red, just because I can. So I'm gonna cut this to that same length and we'll put it all back together. Are you even a car guy if you're not trying to hot rod everything the instant you get it? <laughs> Why would I try? I mean, I haven't even used these pedals yet and I'm already trying to modify them. Why are we like this? Why are we like this? So pedals all set up, ready to go. And the racy covers or pedals, I don't know what you would call them. 
right down below what you would call this is is this a pe right down below which one you think looks better don't do that um so yeah, there we go let's get these measured up and we'll start building the rig oh yeah that's gonna be great that feels really really hard now how good's that a wild aiden appears hey try and press the brake pedal Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Race car stuff. Can't skip leg day in the gym now, mate. Yeah, more like arm day. <laughs> so this is the direct drive wheel. It comes with these slot nuts, which should slide in like that nicely. So center to center, 80 mil. This dimension is not as critical because obviously I can slide the T-nuts, but that's, we'll call it 65. I said 80. From there to there, we said 65. I want to use a brand new die. So let's get this on the bender and uh, do a bit of setup. So we'll get a piece of tube in here and then I can get that to sit at zero and uh, make this read zero exactly. A bit of a bend in this to get it to line up to the zero this is all done up nice and tight um, put a little bit of pressure on the die and that machined groove is now a datum at the edge of the face here so this is going to be my cheetah bar and then slight distraction this is a sim rig that Aiden made a few years ago with his par and uh, we realized well why don't we just plug it into the new gaming PC and he can be playing a set of courser now It's alive! <laughs> there we have a 90 degree bend. <laughs> this would be a perfect job for one of those fancy desks with all the holes in it and you could like mock everything up, but I don't have that. So, but I still have a nice flat bench. So this is the way that you use the cheetah bar. So I want to know where I need to bend you know, so my tube's gonna go like this. Tube's gonna go like this, and I'm gonna wanna bend it back down, right? And I can work out exactly where to do that, because now that we've got that datum, so I can just slide along here and go, oh yeah, I want it to bend there. You're gonna have to move, ain't it? There's a game rig in the way of my saw. Now, if I just slap this in the bender and bend it, because we're doing two bends, if I don't have it in the same plane, it's gonna be on the wonk. So at the moment we're 3.7 degrees out. So with a little bit of tension on there, I'm just gonna twist it in the die. I need that to read the same as the other side. I think I'll get my other one of these, which is on the drift fan, I think. There it is, on the diff there. So that's 0.2. And that's also 0.2. So it means I'm in the same plane now, so when I bend it, she should be straight. And that black texture there on the datum. There we go. That's basically the first bar of the Zim rig. So I may or may not have got that wrong. <laughs> Mistakes are okay as long as you learn from them. So what I learned was by doing this bend a touch earlier, I actually only ended up with 10 degrees. I want 12. So for this one, we're going to move that bend down to here. And it's not 60 degrees, you banana, it's only 15. So I was well off on that. Or we might even be able to use that bit for where the pedals go. So yes, it's wrong. Yes, it was a mistake. We learned from it, move on. There we go, that one was better. 
much better. So with that sitting flat there, with the bend in the right spot and the right angle this time, we ended up with uh, 12 degrees. I'm not gonna argue over 0.2. Um, there we go, 12, 12. 12 degrees, how good? There we go, there's that bend. It sits down nice and flat and up and over. So I need one more of these, but obviously the other way around. Nearly there, and I was gonna match that mark. Now I did this first mark, but it didn't actually fit in the bender because I'm so close to that bend there. So you can see that secondary mark is actually the one I wanna go from. And then obviously I wanna bend this the, uh, the opposite way. So I want a mirror version, not the same. So we're gonna make sure we bend it the right way. I'll just get these brackets to sort of sit on top like that and I'll put a nice little gusset in here and then by drilling two holes it's going to give me about a hundred mil maybe not quite a hundred mil but it's going to give me the option to use both these holes in that one and then both those holes in that one so the chair will have quite a, a good amount of adjustment <laughs> The seat brackets are all tacked. Now I've got to design the uh, pedal frame. Now, a few things that I sort of overlooked with the datum from here to where I needed this, the mounting hole at 550 is exactly on top of this bar. I basically want that there and the hole to mount it's underneath. So that's a slight issue. Um, Design-wise would have been nicer if the bar was here. Uh, and then I can come up with the frame and mount it. So that's one little thing. The other thing is I've changed the pedals now. You can see here, this old styles was a little bit shorter. So I might actually be able to move the pedal box that way um, because we've got adjustment in these pedals. And then the last thing to consider is the height because when we did our setup, this here was sitting on the ground. So I've actually lost 40 mil because of the way that we've done this frame now. This height here, I actually had it 50 mil off the ground. It's now gonna to have to be 90, which is gonna put the pedal box up here somewhere. It's not really gonna work with how I've built the frame. But saying that, I did have the pedals sitting higher than the seat, more of a like a GT car style, but in between a a road car and a formula car with the way we've sat the seating so maybe being a little bit lower is not the end of the world and also the seat here is mounted at the very highest point which is about 40 mil so i could probably drop the seat down um, to gain it so now we're going to build a frame that holds the pedals and uh, get it tacked to here so let's scratch our noggins and figure out how i'm going to do that this is what i've come up with it's gonna make a square tube frame and it's gonna sit here and I'll dial in the angle and tack it in. So Aiden rocked up at the perfect time because uh, this is getting a little tricky. So I've got this clamp dodgily set up, but there's our 23 degrees. We've just done a slight notch on there. So with Aiden just holding a little bit of pressure, I'm gonna quickly get some tacks on here. Mm -hmm. 
So I've got to mount the steering wheel now. This is a good visual, because um, if I take my big, I've got boats for shoes. When we're accelerating, it's gonna be really close there. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna come up a bit higher and then bend and then come up to the wheel. So I'll put this back in the bender and give it a bit more of a bend. So I've scribed my angle and this is the height for where the steering wheel needs to mount or the body of the steering wheel needs to mount. And in that point there, so it needs to go to the edge of this bit of timber. And then if I eyeball this, I think that's going to be a better solution. It doesn't look as cool. I like that really sweet, swept back look. It looks cooler, but um, function is very important. I don't want my feet touching stuff. So I'm thinking a bit more of a bend like that. So that's the idea there. I've just got this mocked up. Uh, we're close enough for now. A little bit on the wonk here. So just notch that tube just a little bit more and get it to sit nice and level. But yeah, I'm <laughs> pretty happy with that. Actually, looks kind of cool. I'm hoping that that's enough clearance of the pedals. I really am. If it's not, I don't know how to fix it. I'm just hoping my feet aren't going to be hitting the top of this, but um, you pretty much drive on your toes. So I'm hoping that that's enough. That could be a fatal flaw with my design, but yeah, there we go. This is um, starting to come together. So my next dilemma is I'm actually out of steel. So even if I didn't make any mistakes, um, that's all I would have had left. I managed to salvage the bits that I did make mistakes with. I do have this piece here. This is some chrome molly uh, that I was using for making some suspension arms. It's not an inch. It's slightly bigger, but it's only a mil bigger diameter than that black bar so we'll probably be able to put this in the bender i need to triangulate the steering back to something now obviously this is all pedal box we want to try to go to this frame uh, i'm going to try and stay away from the curve so i'm going to go to the straight piece here but if i just do a straight line if i was just to do a straight line like that it's going to be right where my leg is so we're going to have to bend it out like this to make make room for my leg and uh, the best way to visual that is I just have this piece of string and I have these awesome um, magnets here from Centurial, mad lads. And then that just allows me to visualize and actually mark out and measure angles and lengths and stuff exactly where I want to go. So that's probably what I'm going to do there. I'll probably have a bend in it like that. And sort of come back this way. I think that'll look quite cool. That also gives me some room here to get my leg in and out of the rig. Because, you know, if I just went from here to here, for example, that'd be great. It'd be nice and strong. But trying to climb in and out is a real pain. So I want to be able to swing my legs into here, in and out, to get in and out. So I think that's going to be the solution. So let's uh, measure that up and I'll get that cut and bent and we'll tack it on. So after a bit of messing about, we're uh, left with this. It's going to sit there like that. There's plenty of leg room and plenty of time to get out. So I'm just going to knock another one up and tuck them in. And then we might even be able to put it together and have a bit of a go. I've got these clamps and they are just fantastic because they uh, make it so easy hold things in place because I need both my hands to do the TIG welding so for tubes like this that are a little not as um, straightforward and they're not like laying flat on a bench or something these um these magnetic clamps are a lifesaver love them so let's get that set up and I'll tack that in place so basically that's the sim rig uh, done uh, obviously nothing's welded out yet that's all just been tacked but what I might do is put a couple of real healthy tacks on a few spots and uh, get the pedals in, get the steering wheel in, go do some racing. That was my goal for the end of the weekend is um, actually do some racing with the sim rig. And then what I want to do is sort of use it, drive it, test it, make sure I'm happy with everything. And then um, everything will come off and it will get fully welded and probably powder coated. But uh, yeah, for now, let's get a couple of real good healthy tacks on it and uh, get the rig set up and go for a drive.
get the pedal box in. <laughs> I'm super happy with this. It's actually come out really cool. When I started this, I wanted to build a rig that actually looked half okay. A lot of rigs I see, they're, just, they're ugly. I'm sorry, I said it, they're ugly. They're gross and ugly and huge. I wanted something that looked cool on the bench, you know? Look cool when you when you walk past it. And uh, I'm pretty stoked with that. It's fairly minimal. Only bars that are there are need they're the ones that need to be there. I might get a bit fancy later and maybe put some braces and do some dimple dyeing and give it a bit of a race car look perhaps. But for now, let's get it off the bench, uh, over to the computer and let's plug it in and go racing. <laughs> With this Assetto Corsa, that track that we went and raced at with the boys, yeah. that's on Assetto Corsa. Someone's made it. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's flexible, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty good to get in and out. It's not too difficult. Really happy with the seating position and how it ended up. The one thing that I need to change is because I've got such a strong brake pedal, the whole frame's actually flexing. And because the brake pedal's connected to the steering wheel mount, it's moving the steering wheel as I brake. And I'm not even putting a lot of force on. I'll need to put a stand on the front there to, to support that. But as far as foot clearance goes, that actually didn't end up being a big problem. It looks like I got all my measurements right. It's really comfortable. Yeah, really looking forward to this. Bow, bow, bow. Uh, just currently downloading all the drivers uh, to get this bad boy up and going. And then getting out, by having that move, by having that clear there, I can just slide my foot out, which is um, exactly what I was going for. And then once I am in, Heaps of room, heaps of clearance around here that I'm not even getting close to, to touching my leg on that, even with, you know, doing silly things. So heaps of movement for my feet. This is high enough that it's not a problem. Stoked. All right, so just setting up the drivers for the Fanatec. So that that's center. Center. Hey, that's, <laughs> oh wow. And then, so this is an electric motor, right? Spin forever, but when I get to that edge, it really starts to fight me now. Accelerator, throttle, yeah, so that's working. All right, let's see how much force I need to actually get 100 on the brake with all those upgrades. Pressing on the brake. Oh, that's not even that hard. That there's 100, okay. Ooh, boom, boom, boom. I wonder if I can tune that in. Calibrate it. Brake vibration test. Oh, yeah, wicked. Let's check them out. Yeah, that's working. And then the throttle vibration. <laughs> Default value is 50. You can raise or lower the valuable personal preference. 100% means you have to press the brake pedal harder. Okay. Let's go up to 80. I guess because it's on a load cell, isn't it? So it knows exactly how much I'm pushing. So let's try that. All right, one more. Max. Maximilian. All right, in and out of this frame. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, you gotta really stand on it then. Okay, so here we go for our first lap in a Lotus around Laguna Seca. <laughs> oh man, the feedback's really cool. Okay, I need the clutch. Down. Whoa, whoa, spinning out, spinning out. <laughs> wow, the V-Bag's pretty violent. That's a wicked. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's probably gonna help if I knew the drag a bit better. Oh, that's the big dip, right, okay. Come on, Timmy, hit the apex. This is awesome. Down here. 
Oh, it's nice having a proper brake pedal under my foot. Turn in, hit the apex. Feed the power. It's the way. I'm up the hill here under the banner and hard on the brakes. And then down the dipper here. Check the power on. Alpha track. <laughs> this full speed back's insane. Oh, braking. Oh, oversteer, yeah, 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 oh, into the fence. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Oh, I'm really, really happy with this. How's the feedback on this? This is nuts. So I'm, I'm off in the dirt here. You can feel it in the dirt. Over the ripple strip. Well. For a weekend of uh, tinkering away and uh, putting some shapes together, I'm having loads of fun now. So I'm going to play with this for a couple of hours, get a bit of a feel for it, see if there's a few things I need to change. Already that brake pedal, I've got some stuff jammed under there now, but we're going to have to brace that up. Um, I'm happy with my clearances everywhere, but yeah, there you go. There's my uh, dream sim rig uh, in my Velo, with my Fanatec, um, all, the, all the stuff that I love. Um, and I'm probably going to be doing a lot of this in the future because it's loads of fun. If you're wondering where I am, I'm probably going to be here doing this for the next few weeks. <laughs> oh, that brake pedal's fantastic. Down the dipper. There it is. Big right. Feed the power on. Whoa! <laughs> so Odie just showed up. He's going to give it a rip. Let's see how you go with that brake pedal the first time. But it's break, 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 break. <laughs> Do you like that brake pedal? You don't like it. Why not? Way too hard. It's, it's how hard it should be. No, nah, that brake pedal's perfect. I'm going to have to start to learn how to trail brake now. So I have a feeling I've just lost my sim and then I'm never going to get to play it ever again. Because <laughs> Aiden stole it. <laughs> so Aiden wanted to give drifting a go. So he's fired that up. How does the steering wheel feel with drifting, Aiden? Feels a lot smoother. A lot smoother? Yeah. We've got a handbrake set up next, don't we? Yeah. There you go. Flick her in. Yeah, son. Yeah. Ah, fence! 